Hello, everyone. Welcome back into the Red Earth Production Studios for another edition of YBM Cast, powered by Game 7 Baseball. If you're looking for a fall ball tournament, uh, the guys over at Game 7, Dave and Dave, can get you taken care of. Just go to Game7Baseball.com and register your team. You know, it's a fall, right? It's a, you, got, you just got done with the tryout. Yep. You got to figure out what you got, right? That's right. And how many guys are playing uh, football and doing a soccer and whatnot and piecing a team together, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> Keeps rolling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so check out Game7Baseball.com. And they will get you going. Also, guys, Red Earth Productions, what we do. If you got a sports video that you need, give us a call. 636-400-3199. We'll hook you up. Guys, let's talk some baseball. Sure. I got uh, Kevin Mulder of PBR, uh, Missouri in here, along with Coach Tony Perkins from Francis Howe High School, talking uh, future games. Guys, we're down at uh, Lake Point, Georgia, correct? Yeah. How'd it go? Went, went good. We uh, went down there, represented the, te- uh, the state well. I thought we, uh, you know, we had the high school team, and then we also have um, a 14U team and a 13U, so we do a junior feature games as well, and Coach Perkins is, is in charge of the high school group, and, uh, you know, I, I, our, our, as individuals, our guys did fairly well, so we're excited about it. Very good, very good. Yeah, Coach? I would say that, uh, yeah, Coach did, Muller did a really good job of selecting the guys. I mean, like, it's not measured on wins and losses. It's more just, you know, showing. We had some great athletes. I mean, we had guys 6'2", six, 6'4", six, and he went through the whole state and picked them up, coming from whatever towns, towns I've never heard of. <laughs> but, he, but he found them. <laughs> he found them. So we had a bunch of colleges, coaches around all of our games, and they really drummed up a lot of interest. And, and he mentioned the Junior Futures game. That's what's kind of interesting to me now because that, that world has evolved where we would go watch the 13s and the 14s and, you know, and trying to help out as much as we can. But there was a lot of, you know, Power 5 schools getting in on those 13s and 14-year-olds and trying to get them on get them committed early. Wow, no kidding. Absolutely. I, I don't know if you know this, Coach, but uh, Ty Thompson, the star of the 14U team, committed to Tennessee – couple days ago did he really yep <laughs> this kid's <laughs> special he's from rock Ty Thompson. Where's he's from, he from rockbridge yeah columbia rockbridge he's pretty good wow yeah. good for him yeah tony v got him yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> tennessee tennessee he was at those games he was there yeah. now let, let's talk and here's the thing i'm going to come back to this because we were talking about this folks before we started this show because i was talking to to these gentlemen they've been around baseball at, at at high levels you know when you're talking about that that kind of that excites parents doesn't it yeah i think there's a lot of parents that like to see their kids names out there right. <laughs> yeah just check twitter right. <laughs> right so how do you how do you keep that into perspective and how do we keep parents expectations uh you know in check to a certain degree. I don't mean, you know, if you're play- I mean, this young man is obviously, as you said, a special talent. He is. Yeah, it is. It, it can be a good thing and a bad thing. It, it's great for Ty Thompson. But the unfortunate thing is he he's a one percenter of the one percents right now. And I, I tell this to our junior future game guys, the best player on the team at 13U and 14U, and you can keep on going down in age, that doesn't mean anything that you're going to be uh, the star player come when you're playing for Coach Perkins. Uh, you, you know, it, a <laughs> lot changes, and the kids that are at the bottom of the, the, the talent pool on, on those teams sometimes turn into the stars, and, and it, it just everyone's development comes at different times, and uh, a lot of it at that age is strength-based. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, hey, the kid that grew first and the strongest first and, uh, you know, often is the better player. And what's interesting with Ty Thompson, he hasn't hit his growth spurt yet. Like, he hasn't – he's still – he's a 13-year-old kid and still. His dad's uh, a big old dude. Yeah, so he's still <laughs> a boy. That. There are some kids on that 14U team that you're like, oh, gosh, dang, this guy, you know, would fit in at a, at a small co- – you know, at a college, like a full-grown man. Uh, but right. Ty is not that. He is still – 100% a kid, and I mean that in a positive way, no, I physically. Um, yeah. So that's an exciting thing for him. But I always like to say everyone's going to run their own race. Uh, you know, Twitter can be great and, and social media in general. 
but at the same time it can be a negative too if you get overly caught up in what what is going on with others and everything kind of just gets magnified a little bit everyone needs to run their own race and and there the, every year there are guys that um you know were not on the map and then it went between their sophomore year and their junior year sometimes it's their junior year and senior year they blow up and they become a big deal and you know it, it it's not it doesn't happen quickly for everybody <laughs> right right but it has happened quite a bit a few times around here that i've noticed where guys do are committing in eighth grade yep yeah and by the time they're you know sophomore juniors they decommit and, and end up going somewhere else so like coach is saying people do progress at different rates and that's exactly exactly right yeah because we had uh you know we've 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 followed a couple of players that played for uh dave hartman's dynamite team Riker benz um gavin richards both these young men they're i think they're freshmen this year they'll be freshmen in a couple weeks yeah. <laughs> yes exactly and they both committed to oklahoma at this point of course it's all verbal yeah. right so you know it'll be interesting to see at this point they're both going to v i believe they both are going to viani too so yeah. uh you know i'm a, good luck for viani you know I mean, right. <laughs> let's keep stacking the deck there <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll we'll see how those things play out. I'm interested to see because I've watched these two kids since like they were 11, right? Yep. Uh, they're both extremely talented kids. Um, so I think it, I'm I'm interested in continuing to watch that and how this all unfolds as we we're we're talking here about what is that next step? How do those things? And you can see it unfold, you know, right in front of your eyes. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about this earlier, but, you know, when kids are so young, I mean, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on a kid to have them go play in a club ball or go to certain showcases. And, you know, I got people talking to me about 8 and 10-year-old what they should do. I said, just let them go out there and have some fun. Right. I mean, find a group. that Maybe it's just your neighborhood group or the kids you go to school with, but go out there and have fun. And, and Coach Mulder said it earlier, don't him, play other sports. I mean, yep. I'm, a, I'm a big guy about letting kids play sports. Just like my own sons, they all play multiple sports. And, you know, just go out and have fun and be, let them be a kid. You don't need to be, you know, building robots out there. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Building ro I like that. Yeah. I like that. And we talk about these things a lot. So let's, let's look at some kids, though, here from the – let's – I've got the pitching staff up here. And so – you know, I mean, when you're looking at these kids here, uh, of course, the, the at the top of the list, and I didn't put them in this order because it was the order that I got it off the actual website. So there you go. Yeah. But the first name, of course, everybody should, you know, it's recognized. It's a, it's a Bennis, a Seth Bennis. And I think he goes over here to Liberty. Timberland. Liberty. 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 Yeah. Okay. So, you know, measurables. Let's talk about that. You know, you can see this here. We talk with Seth Bennis here. He maxed out at 88 miles an hour. He's a he's a sophomore this year, correct, or junior? He'll 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 be he, entering his junior year. Entering that's his, all these kids pretty much. All these kids are going in their junior year. Yeah. So, coach, when you're seeing this, and you're a high school coach, you got these kids coming up, and I'm uh, and you're seeing these numbers. What does that tell you? What, how do you deal with that? And then looking at the player as they're coming up. Well, first thing is he's awful good. And that's <laughs> 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 but specifically about Seth, I mean, I talked to some major colleges about him. And the answer I got kind of made sense to me. He said, you know, Seth, like it says 85, 88, you know, there's hundreds of kids in that same boat at this point in time in, in the nation. And it, what, it's how they progress from, from the next two years if they're going to jump into him. His, his velo jumps up to 92, 94. Yeah, he's a power five guy. But, you know, 85, 88 is average, and, and the big dogs ain't going to bite on that one. But, uh, but he does pitch, and he's got the frame, and he's got the lineage. He's yeah. got the bloodlines. Right. Yeah. Right. So everybody pays attention to that. Would, would, a, would a power five maybe – take a chance on that well for lack of a better term genetics uh possibly coach probably speak to that better than i could i 
I think what what Seth has put himself in a position like it, it stands alone. Like he he was there because he's good. No, um, I, and, I understand. And when Coach says he's eighty five, eighty eight, that's really good for a sophomore in high school, but that isn't very good for a freshman in college. Um, gotcha. Unless you can flat out pitch or possibly left handed. So when we're looking at a kid, <laughs> those or lefties, yeah. it, any of these kids. You're looking at a Seth Bennis, for example. He's 85, 88. He throws strikes. Uh, he's got a big curveball. Some say he needs to throw it harder, but it, it's got big time spin on his 2,500 plus on the RPMs on the spin, which means he can spin the ball really effectively. Um, and yeah, he, he's projectable. So you're hoping that that 85, 88 turns into, you know, maybe 87, 91, maybe better than that. Um, you know, and, and that's what these colleges are out there saying, all right, this guy, um, he's really good for this class right here, right now at the future games. He's measured against other elite guys from all across the country. Um, he showed well, and now these colleges are making more or less educated guesses on where they think these guys are going to end up being from a talent standpoint. Yeah, you're right. It, it is, is an educated <laughs> guess. Yeah. So let, let's look at a couple of guys here that are at that top end of this. Cole Chance, he maxed it at, at 90, was sitting 87, 89 with his fastball, sitting 74. I mean, I mean 74 to 74. That curveball was consistent. Um, Will Libert, 89 max, 85 to 89. We saw Will at the state championships, too. That kid is – was good. Will was, uh, you know, maybe one of the biggest, um, you, you know, one of the guys that people were most excited to see, I'd say, for Team Missouri at the future games. And uh -huh. uh, I agree. You, you know, we had uh, over 330 impressed. colleges at the event, and every single SEC school was saw us play this weekend. So, uh, and they were all there watching Will, certainly. And he, uh, you know, he didn't have his – best stuff that day um but he pitched really well he showed well uh you know he's up to 89 or so and will's the type of guy that uh you know he's the type of guy that's not going to be able to play for coach perkins because he's a in-game guy he's not a showcase dude he is you put him out there he is going to compete his butt off for the entire game he's not giving the ball back until the game's over and and we saw that uh, during the state tournament, that yeah. guy could flat out pitch, and he competes, and My then he also guy. has good stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> and and to you know to uh, Kevin's point, when we're looking at these types of things, and I know the the games there, I I'm I'm this guy. I, I have this at, under I attitude about winning in certain respects, and I understand these things there. And, I'm, and I know you do, too, and I know everybody does. But these games aren't built for just about going out and winning a trophy, and that's not what it's about. It's about putting these players on the field, giving people an opportunity to look at their talent. Correct. And seeing how they compete at a high level against, you know, we played Texas. Similar talent, Louisiana right? and yeah. Arkansas, and all them dudes could swing it. So, yeah. And we weren't – all these guys that we were talking about, you know, they're all high upper 80s. Yeah. But you got to pitch because yeah. those dudes will hit that fastball. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. If you if if exactly, and that's true at the big league level. At any level, if it's if they understand a fastball, it's rhythm and timing, mm -hmm. right? Yep. I wanted to say something too. We, you know, coach was talking about uh, spin rate and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Down in Atlanta, they had boards up and it actually showed it. You had yeah. you had the MPs, you had the spin rate, you had exit velo. All the information was up there, and, and I had a hard time processing it. I mean, I, I learned a lot about spin rate <laughs> during that time. And we're going to talk about that I'm here old school. <laughs> like, yeah, he throws hard. You know, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So when you're looking at this, and, and when we're talking about this and what you were saying, competing on the mound, put, going into that game, it's not necessarily, okay, the, the result at the end of the game, but – these coaches that are there are looking to see how that individual competes in that at bat, in mm -hmm. that against a top prospect out of Texas that may be going to A and M or someplace like that. Correct? Yeah. yeah, that that's kind of the 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 fun thing about the event because 
So, like, let's just think about the the area uh, or the state. You know, you go to like who leads the le- uh, area in batting average or who leads the area in strikeouts. Oftentimes, it's not the best hitter. It's the kid that might play, you know, some lesser competition or the kid that you know has the 15 strikeouts a game. They don't play some of the large schools uh, or something like that. So now we got these talented guys. And we're putting them against other talented players, whether it's hitter or pitcher. So everyone's getting challenged, and so it's kind of puts everyone on equal footing. Well, here, here you go. And, and now we can say, well, this kid hit 650 at some high school versus the guy that might be Coach Perkins' best hitter that hit 400, which is really good. Maybe. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not, you know, it doesn't mean that just because that guy hit 250 points better than the guy on Coach Perkins' teams doesn't mean he's a better hitter necessarily. It, it right. could be sketch. So that's the cool thing about the future games. It, it lines uh, each state's best uncommitted players up. And it, it, if you're doing it there, uh, it, it really means something. One thing that the coaches were talking about, and I've been talking to them, they like to see a pitcher when they're in trouble. Like if they got you know numerous base runners for a second and you know, see, see how he competes there. That that shows the competitive side of them, and so that's important. I mean, in the way you know most of our guys through just two innings, maybe one inning. Yep. So the dudes that sat dudes sat on our game because we had arms you know eighty eight ninety every game. Right. So the I mean, they knew that the next guy you know they come to see Seth Bennett. Okay, then who followed Seth? Somebody you no know, before him. Uh, yeah, we had uh, let's let's see. He, uh, Seth was second. Will Will, Mo- uh, Will, Will Moore Will Will Lippert, yeah. and then uh, Seth Bennis through right. Right. So, so it was like boom, yeah, boom. And Will Moore. Yeah. Oh. Right. They're all 80, 88 max and mid eighties up and yeah. down. Right. Yeah. So those are live arms that <laughs> coaches are paying attention to. And I think that's an important thing. I always thought it's interesting, and I and I've I've believed this for a while. You got a kid in trouble. You know, he's maybe one, two on, gives up the bomb. Okay. Body language. Right what away. does he do? I always look at what's the next pitch. Can he throw a strike? Is he getting the back up on the mound? Am I getting ahead of that next guy, or am I walking the next two batters? So there was there was a couple of good stories, and, and Coach Perkins is dead on on this. Coaches like to see how kids handle adversity because a lot of these kids are the best, and – the man on their high school team or whatever, and then they often don't get punched in the face. And and <laughs> you really learn something about a guy once he, they have to deal with some adversity. We uh, we had a, a 2025 um, actually throw the first night for us. We had a, a little pitching uh, shuffle, so we needed to find an inning. We had a kid named Tyler Wood um, out of Kansas City, yeah. uh, at, I believe St. Paul Lutheran High School, Six three, super physical. Uh, he's going to be going into high school. Uh, this kid doesn't get hit at, at, at his age. He dominates. Um, he, he now he's versus Team Louisiana on opening night of the feature games, um, and he gives up a home run and happened to be now the kid Tyler didn't know this, but it was Louisiana's best player. He's going to be an SEC uh, talent, a uh, uh, commit here soon. Uh, well, he strikes out two two guys in the outing, doesn't walk anyone, and has a great outing, and I think opened up some eyes. And that's what happens. You you play against really good people, uh, they're going to hit home runs <laughs> off you, no matter how good you are. Um, and that kid didn't get rattled. He struck out a couple kids uh, and was an eighth grader with two strikeouts in the future game. So that that really shows you something, in my opinion. Um, I agree. You know, I agree. Getting more thrown more. in the fire like that. Right. So, Coach, when you're talking about these guys right here, um, let's uh, – a Jackson Downing. And, and you look down here, I see Cameron Poe is another one that was maxing at 90. And then you had, you know, and then Jake McGee, who is um, coming in. He's a sophomore, right? Yes. Yeah. He's going to be that sophomore. You had – you know, when you're looking at that 84 max there, he's a little more projectable. You got an extra year in that respect, right? But when you're talking about Cameron Poe, you're talking about uh, Will Libert and Cole Chance with those those maxes, 
are they are they the ones that are getting that power five look i think so i think every, all those three you just ripped off i think are good cameron poe threw for us last year yeah. and, and didn't do great oh. when and but this time he was fantastic in my opinion i had a college big you know, sec school come up to me and say how come this kid's not committed yet I said, well, <laughs> Then I asked him what his grades were, and he says a 4.4 and had a 30 ACT. I'm like, okay, and he's ripping up Duke and places like that. I'm like, wow, good for you, man. That's awesome. That's going to get you some help. You can go anywhere you want to, kid. Yeah. Left-handed throwing 90. Yep. Yep. <laughs> You're yep. good. And he's a lefty? Yeah. Throwing 90? Yeah. Oh. He's how you want him to look, too. Six, three-ish, yeah. long, lean, and, uh, yeah, high mm -hmm. academics. And Isn't he a, a CBC one. kid? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's what yep. I thought. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you look up and down here, guys. Okay, so let's 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 we're looking at creme de la creme, and we can sit here and talk all we want to about the difference and and say ah, it's not fair, but that's just the way it works, right? So, if you've got players, and let's talk about this, where you know we we got players, uh, pitchers that kids that can throw well. You, I mean, you have kids in high, at your on your high school team. Throwing low 80s, I'm sure. No, they better. <laughs> <laughs> well, they may not be on my team. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, but see, look at the – and let's look at the difference in that thought process, Coach, because there's other high school programs that, I mean, that may be their top guy, yes? True. 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 And it, it's just – I don't know. I mean, you don't have to throw hard to compete. I mean, you, I, you know, I could just back, back I understand. A bit. I understand. I mean, if you got a guy that can throw strikes and has got a good breaking pitch or sliders, and the biggest thing is having a great changeup, yeah, he's my guy, but he might be the guy that I just run through one time through the lineup and mm -hmm. not any more than that and then not let him see him again. You know, but most of the guys now that I got are 84 to 90. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's – where my staff is at. Yes. But, and that's everybody in our conference too, big school. <laughs> yeah. All of them are like yeah. that. You know, you get down to class one, class two, you're going to see low 70s. Right. You know, low, to, low to mid 70s probably. That's what they got. I mean, you know, I, I just take what I got too. I mean, I, I, I can't recruit like other people, but, you know, I just take what I got and that's where we're at right now. Okay. <laughs> so, Kevin, when you're talking to kids and you're looking at this and you see it probably more than all of us in that respect, when you're seeing these kids, how do you talk to them? What do they, you know, uh, do, and we come back to this, do parents have the right expectation, understanding there's still a place, there's still a, I mean, and we've, we've said this before, how many very, 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 very good Division II schools are there in this, in this state? The Missouri Every, is loaded with top. We, we, we've talked about this a number of times. Central Missouri was national champion uh, runner-up this year. Uh, Missouri Southern was a, a top 10. Lindenwood was a top 10. Uh, Maryville's an up-and-coming Division two. So we got a lot of really, and not just Division two. Webster University and Wash U are top-end D3. They go to the D3 World Series. Um, you got Jeffco. You got Crowder. These guys go to the, uh, they've been to Grand Junction, mm -hmm. the JUCO World Series recently. You got Missouri Baptist, who's been uh, to the NAI World Series so the state of Missouri, uh, I think Central Methodist uh, in Columbia is is also been out there. Top so twenty five every year. Yeah. So you're getting there are some really uh, you want to say small school or, or you know D two non D one. We we have some great uh, small school uh, college baseball in our state, and we're really fortunate. So when you're when you're talking and we're looking at these numbers here as a pitcher, we'll just bring it back to a pitcher and this young man. You know, you can work, right? Everybody can work at velocity and things like that. But you're in that, you know, 80 to 83 range. There's still that place. Don't give up on wanting to play at that collegiate level. Because, and I'm sure Central Methodists, they're looking for guys that can throw in this level. I'm looking for the bounce back guys, 94. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's what they're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's a reality. I, I saw that at the NAIA level. Mm -hmm. I saw two or three kids coming from Division One schools bouncing back and play. I mean, I saw kids throwing it. There was, I think, two or three kids on that. Um, I think it was uh, Central Arkansas, wasn't it, Justin, or something like that? Um, Central Baptist. 
We saw two or three kids throw 90s, and they were bounce back kids from Division One schools. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, there it's all across the level, and I think uh, you know as we're talking about the future games, if you're wanting to, if you've got the talent, but understanding what is that level, and this is where the metrics help you understand where you're at, correct? Yeah, the me- the metrics are a separator, certainly. Um, like a, a kid that um, the metrics the colleges coaches loved was uh, Tanner Paschke, for example, would be a great one. Um, he was 86 to 88. He is a normal-sized high school athlete, good athlete. He plays shortstop. We invited him to the future games as a pitcher. He want, he's going to be a two-way guy. I think he's uh, – you know, he plays left side infield. He's a shortstop third baseman in high school and um, on his summer team, and he's good. Um, he'll, he'll get recruited to do both in college. Um, but what separated him, he spun the breaking ball at 3,000-plus, his slider, which is uh, very elite. There's only so many guys out there. So we had schools asking about him specifically because how he spun his breaking ball, um, which is, you know, about six or 700 RPM above – you know, average. So it's, he, he was, uh, you know, he showed elite spin on his breaking ball. So that was one where like the metrics really helped a guy like him. Were they checking his hat and glove? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't help yeah. myself. <laughs> oh, mercy. <laughs> Coach, when you're, when, you know, this week, uh, that week you spent with those kids and, you know, when you're talking you're seeing kids that you don't normally see, you mm-hmm. know, learning whatnot. How do you, what does that help you with when you go back to your team and you're talking to kids and, and you know, your coaching approach? That oh, way? It's, first of all, it's just an honor that, you know, Coach Mulder asked me to, to do that, and I just love doing it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, it's always fun when you get around a bunch of good players and there's no schmucks in that group. <laughs> 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 you know? But it, it is it does help me and – you know, I'll talk to them and, and just in little side conversations, you know, about what they're doing for training, what they're doing in the summer, where they lean towards in colleges, that that kind of thing. And then, you know, I, I can take that stuff back, you know, to my high school kids and I can say, okay, this kid is going to, you know, Duke or whatever. And mm-hmm. the reason he's going to Duke is because of you know, his academics. Blah, blah, blah. So I, that, that story is going to be told a million times, you know, for me because I, I'll be trying to always impress the academics on my kids because – when you get to those colleges, if you get 50% academic and 50% athletic, you're doing pretty well. That's good math. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So, I mean, I enjoy it. And then what helps me too, uh, my assistant coach noticed, noticed this about three years ago. Like, if we play a team and you're going through and shaking hands, just like before COVID, but you know, you shake hands and you, know, you certain kids you give a man hug to. <laughs> Right. Yeah. That would be a kid off the futures team or a kid off my summer team. They're like, and afterwards they say, "Kid played for you, didn't he?" Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. You develop those relationships. And it's cool to see these kids going off into that place, and you you feel like you've had a, a little bit of a hand in helping them get where they need to go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, their talent stands by itself, but it is you know one of the talks we have with our team beforehand is. Um, you know, they'll, hopefully they draw back on this because one day, many years down the road, they're going to see each other um, on a college in, during BP during a, uh, a before college game, uh, maybe at the stadium at a, at a, during a pro game that they're playing in versus each other, and they'll remember back to, hey, oh yeah, I know so and so. We we played on Team Missouri future games together, mm-hmm. and so these guys. Um, you know, we'll know each other for a long time growing up through baseball together. One of the things I thought was interesting, we had interviewed uh, Jake McGee at one of your events over at uh, the sports barn. Okay, yeah. And he was talking about the upcoming uh, summer that they were planning. He was going to be traveling with with a team that was a national team from all different parts. And he said, you know, I got I got these I got their numbers and I've been texting him, getting to know them, developing those relationships. How much does it help these kids in their own growth as people to learn how to develop those relationships? It's it's important because I, uh, Coach and I see it both ends of the spectrum on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, The the guys that handle it really well and the guys that don't handle it so well. And uh, 
you know, the college coaches notice. And yeah, if you're left-handed, throw 93 and you're a big time guy, then people might overlook some things. But if it's close, that, that type of stuff really does make a difference. And, uh, you know, academics make a huge difference. How you handle yourself off the field makes a difference for 99% of the players out there, I would say. Um, I was thinking about uh, some of the conversations that went on in the dugout, and, and you were talking about them picking their 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 uh, text group texts. Yeah. It, 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 it's it's interesting. I, I just like being a fly on a wall sometimes, listening to them talk. Like Poe comes off, and about four POs, you know, there's four or five kids running around that are just pitchers. They huddle up and they're talking about how you do that, and how you holding your ball in this career, how you how you doing, and it just it was constant for three days. You know, guys asking other players because they have total respect for each other because everybody right. knows there that they, they, they can play. You know, and guys, you know, after a, after a base hit, okay, you know, what was it? What are you looking for? You know, is that a slider? Is it a change? What was going on there? And they're always talking, trying to help each other, and they're always looking to get better, which is pretty cool. That's, and that's the way it should be. I and think I so. think – and, and that, that really struck me when, you know, Jake, and this was before his freshman year – and I thought it was very interesting. It was it was kind of eye opening that he was taking that that step and really working those relationships and understanding, as you said, these are really good players. What can I learn? Yeah, and Jake was the youngest. Well, Tyler Wood was the the only twenty five there, and and Jake was the only. Uh, well, there was one of two. Uh, he was yeah. one of two going to be sophomores. Two thousand twenty fours. Him and Devin Wassman were. The young guys on the team. <laughs> so I think that that bodes well. And so I think there's so much these kids can learn from these types of, ev of events, correct? Mm -hmm. I, I agree. But some people, like Coach probably sees guys that show up to every event he has. Yeah. And I hate to say this. I, I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I understand. Yeah. I'm, understand. I'm all for him. <laughs> you know? But uh, it's good for him. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But if you go to one or two a year, I think that's – you're getting your face out there. They do a great job on their website, getting people mm -hmm. out there, the information's out there. You know, like uh, I have, you know, a player on my team that really good player had really hadn't been to too many of anything. I said, you need right. to go to a PBR thing as, as soon as possible. Sure. And then, then if they continue to go and as they grow from year to year, you know, do at least one every year. You know, you can track your numbers. I tell my kids at camp, you know, track your 60 time, put it in your notes, whatever. If you're not getting better, you're doing something wrong with your training. Right, you know, right. With, with the PBR information, it's just a plethora of stuff. I mean, if you're not getting better every year, you, you're, you're, you've stable, you know, leveled off, there's something wrong because you, you're not doing the work on your own that you need to do. Well, I think that goes, that's a great point. And really, you know, with PBR and these types of things, it's an investment into your future. No, right. Yeah. No. No question. And coach is right. You you don't need to come to an event every single week. It, it is a great resource. A. You know we we are promoting you your brand you um, to coaches and you know. But the other nice thing it does is uh, you know you come to an event in the summer, uh, go work your butt off and and check in with us in the fall and see how you've done. Or if you're at the fall, uh, well. You got uh, October, November, December, January to train. Uh, see what, see the fruits of your labor, and and or it can also be a a, a reality check too. If you didn't work and your numbers <laughs> stay the same or decrease, then it's like, oh boy, uh, I, you know, got or or your numbers stay the same. Other kids pass you by, uh, and that's like we circle this back to like those young guys, those 2025s that are. Uh, committed to schools are all really good players for 2025s none of them are good enough to play college baseball today like right none of they they couldn't go play at whatever school they're signed at uh this season they need to get a heck of a lot better still they're just the best players right now at that age but they got a long ways to go to be able to compete at that level that they're signed up for the colleges are making an educated guess that, okay, this dude's at the top right now. We think he's going to keep getting better and better and working hard and will be an impact player for us four or five years from now. Um, if that kid just is content, oh, yeah, I got, um, 
you know, I got mine. I, I'm on social media and everyone sees how great I am and then just sits on it for four years, they probably won't end up at that school. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, you, you, got, you have to keep getting better. No, no one in high school is good at, you know, if they're interested in playing collegiately, professionally, no one in high school is good enough to not work anymore. You got to keep working <laughs> at it and getting better and better. I think that goes to a lot of what uh, people should do. Do you have a plan? Do you understand how you want to progress? And I love what you said there. You know, you, you go, you find find the ones that's, that fit to you, work, you know, that you want to go to, work within that, see if my measurables are getting better. Is the program that I'm doing throughout the summer or the winter or whatever the case may be when I go to the next one, is it working for me? Yep. And what do I have to tweak? And, and what is the next step in the phase? It's all a learning process through that. Yeah, they got to get bigger and faster and stronger. And a lot of guys don't got that, you know, don't have that figured out. I mean, I know most public schools and in private schools, I'm sure they have uh, hours where they can lift at sure. school. I mean, I'm like, that's crazy easy. Guys, <laughs> you can go in there and lift for 50 minutes and you get an A for it, cause you, but put in time. Don't be talking with the girls and messing around with them. I mean, get in there and get stronger. I mean, it, it's it's there. It's part of your school day and it's part of your routine. And some guys buy in and get into it and get bigger, fast, stronger, and they'll come back. I won't see them, my kids, till probably January when they roll in. And there's a couple guys that are like, I know what you've been doing, and I don't know what you've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> coach, one of my favorite lines to tell guys who went back when I was a college coach was, they call it boys' high school baseball, and they call it men's college baseball. So if you don't have that figured out, um, right. you're not going to survive in college. And, nope. and the guys that figure it out early in high school are going to have big-time years. Well, yeah, uh, I've had a lot of guys make huge strides just strength-wise. And it's like, man, this is great. That guy paid attention. You know, and then we'll, we'll take your buddies with you. <laughs> Wherever you're going, <laughs> if you're watching, get this, some of your teammates <laughs> with you. Let's go. If you're watching this, you ain't paying attention. You need to rethink what you're doing. <laughs> Pay attention to what they're saying. Yeah, no doubt, get stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks for coming on. I, I want to have you back. I would like to talk more about the offensive side of it. Talk about some of those players. Come back and and we'll do that. And we'll get into some more of those things. I focused on the pitchers here. I, I think there's some really, really good names. I, and I think kids that we're going to see long term at the collegiate level, yes? I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. So, folks, thanks for coming in uh, and watching uh, YBM Cast. If you like what we're doing, please hit the subscribe button. Hit that dinger next to it because that's what we do around here. We hit dingers. <laughs> Right? Because chicks dig the wrong one. You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, leave your comment. Uh, you know, both these gentlemen here, a lot of baseball experience. If you have a question or something or a comment you'd like to put in, please, we're, we're watching that all the time. Feel free to do so. We'd love to hear from you. Till next time, all you pitchers, keep throwing strikes, you hitters. Hit them where they ain't. It's good advice. Everybody have a great day in the Lord, and we'll see you next time.